So the order that they just got was the Hawaiian roll, edamame, and the pink panther roll. Mm. Yeah, Philadelphia, Hawaii, edamame, and the pink panther roll. Right here, that's, that's what they just got. It's a lunch special thing for this thing. Hi, I would like to order. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. One second. I'm so sorry. Yeah, take your time. I know you're working hard over there. I'm just trying to do this. I have to pick up every single order. Sorry. So, what can I get you? Oh, absolutely. We're going to do a Philadelphia roll, okay. a Hawaiian, Hawaiian, edamame, and a pink panther. As in the pink panther. Perfect. <laughs> Absolutely. They have it all figured out. And I give them a big thumbs up. I cannot think of any more dialogue today. I can't think of any more dialogue today. Get it? Da -da -da. Eight people, it's fully packed, and the people made it. Alright. I think it's going to be at least 20 minutes. Oh, the zoo run, Fort Worth, it's April 1st, coming up. Got to register, though. You want to run around, lose all that back fat from the holidays. They have this little place over here that's called, I think it's called Wonderfo. It's a little Chinese, uh, Asian, probably Vietnamese joint they, they have like sushi and noodles and toilet paper and uh napkins and well they have they have nap well they have kind of paper towels i guess some places are out of toilet paper well, hey this isn't the pandemic remember that remember that craziness I'm trying to get into a cvs where's the toilet paper some of it's in the bathroom, or it used to be. Look, it's a Trinity Metro. See it over my shoulder right here. There it is. And the back. And Trader's Jews. I wrote a song about this place. It was on my uh, SoundCloud. There we go. There's something. I love, ooh, pantomime. Dude. More than pantomime, it's a rod sticking up out of the ground. That's more than pantomime. It's a rod sticking out of the ground. It's more than pantomime. It's a dangerous rod said Buster Keaton. There we go. Back to Trader Joe's. Uh, I'm not going to say anything mean about Mr. Carey. He did let me work overtime. So I walked around on his little set. Okay. Probably I'm probably losing his temper.
So kind of you. First went in, he said it was a 30 minute wait, and now he's saying it's a full hour, a full hour wait for like five pieces of sushi plates or whatever. So he got slammed. Time right now, military time. About an hour on a Friday, I saw him make it in front of me. I just asked him, you might want to make the order. And finally he made the order. So it was already prepped. It'll be noted. Okay. And we're going to drop this at your doorstep. Hopefully I did get the time on it when I came on. I'm going to get the time when I'm pulling out. One ow. Ow. All right, we'll get the time on it. And take some time on it. February 3rd, 826, when they finished the order. Wasn't even that busy when I walked out, so. In Japan, it wouldn't be a problem. In Fort Worth, that's it. They're right next to Yogi's Deli and Grill. And we'll see next year who can try it. It's a free spot right there. If you're a business, that's free right there. If you want a free spot for a business, I just sold it. Now enough of Peter Sellers. Now we're gonna talk business. I do have some problems with Asian restaurants, but not like the Indian restaurants. Those, they spend very careful time making those orders in a very specific way. And that's Irving. That's the nightmare of, of Irving. We're far from Irving now. So the Asian restaurant in Fort Worth is a very crucial uh, spot if, you're, if you do Asian food. It's very important. And they'll learn over time. They'll figure these things out. I don't know if they watch the shows or what, but it's very difficult uh, to just simply say that he's slammed on an order that's like five sushi rolls or whatever, one being the Pink Panther. So it's a hard one to judge. It's odd because I looked at the text. And it was like seven something. We're almost eight something. We're, we're all talking about almost more than an hour. That When I go back and think, the only issue I've ever had ever the entire time of me delivering for more than two years is at an Indian restaurant in Irving where they took more than an hour. Then I had to drive back to get the completed order and that was going through Uber Eats. So that one got my attention. It is a Friday, but it did get my attention. And we have, uh, we've, we've spoken enough about Peter Sellers. So now we're talking about sushi. And the promos, or what they used to call them, I guess the bonuses have, now they call it a bonus, but it has changed where it usually came to about 15 to $17, kind of like bonus if you did four of them. This was probably before the winter storm. So now they've done it to where it's like up to six, I think. I'll have to double check it though. It's up to six rather than four. So they're ca call, calling for more uh, delivery because of the winter storm.
werewolf does eat. The werewolf does eat, but I don't think it's about eating as much as the vampire, because the vampire needs the blood in order to survive. So they go out and, you know, in all the vampire movies, interview with the vampire to Dracula, it's like a substance. The werewolf is more of a, it's like a curse of anger. It's more of a, of, of a thing of rage, and the curse is part of that thing. So the victims may, in a werewolf situation, like, like say, in, in, in Grace, how the cows are mutilated, um, they're left, you know, almost like an offering or something. Where, you know, in a werewolf case, he would take the blood, you know, like an interview with the vampire and rice and all that stuff. Um, and even, I don't know, I think Twilight is maybe part of it. I, I don't I remember the, ver the, the myth in Twilight's different than the one in Interview with the Vampire. And I don't know how Anne Rice takes on the werewolf that much, but it is a curse. I think Stephen King might get into it in Cycles of the Werewolf, uh, which was turned into Silver Bullet. But I do think, from my studying the mythology, from my perspective, that it's from a curse out of, out of anger from a soldier, from a cursed soldier from the Greek time. And he was cursed to have this anger and I think even to eat the, the victims or something or to go after them just like a wolf or something like that. And that was a lycanthropy. Uh, comes from the lycanthrope, uh, the curse of that. So it's, it's, it's a weird difference between the vampire and the werewolf. All right, blue sushi sake grill. Got to pick up another one and drop that sushi at your doorstep. God has us exactly where he wants us. Another thing that Grace Lippin will say. And Gerald, more Gerald would probably say it too. He'd probably say, they'd probably, probably both mimic those same things. And and Gerald would say, God has us exactly where we want, where he wants us, you know, the same thing. Now remember, Gary Ullman doesn't ideally play the pastor, kind of ex-pastor or minister or whatever. That would just be a minister that no longer has his church or maybe maybe doesn't really have his flock or maybe he's trying to build a new flock. He's not going to give up his mission. But he just goes into this whole world of the werewolf thing, you know. Okay, if we go back and look at Cycle of the Werewolf, with, which is with Stephen King, the, the pastor and that, the minister or the, the, the preacher-looking character, is actually the werewolf. In this case, that is not the case. That is not the case with this one. And this one, it's a non-denominational minister that is the werewolf hunter. Okay, so he's out to hunt werewolves. And he was a minister. So we know that Stephen King used the preacher in Silver Bullet. But Silver Fang is not a werewolf. Silver Fang is a, is a good man. He's a good character. It's... Uh, the werewolf that's bad that we don't really even understand we don't really know it's a shapeshifter thing we have an idea towards the end and the cat is to blame in certain aspects too so it's a, it's a shapeshifter thing that's what I like about it La La Land different forms busy too. They're saying about a 30 minute wait. So hopefully they're more sincere than the other one. He was just, just completely smashed. And that can get a little emotional, you know, when you're that smashed and you're telling the guy 30 minutes and then it turns into longer than that. And then you have to sit there and stand there and watch him make the order, you know, I don't know. I think there's just a little bit of something there, you know, I don't want to get any, any kind of opinion, but seems like to me I don't know I'll I'll figure it out eventually this one's a different one so this one is known as we'll, we'll get a better shot than that
It's known as Hanavi. I'm gonna get a, another better angle. Let me let me just walk over here. I, I love these like billboards that are high up, like that. Isn't that cute? Right there. Isn't that something? Right there. Isn't that cute? Let me get a better one right here. There we go. Wrong restaurant, but looks very nice. Very nice. It's a very nice restaurant. But I, I talked to them and they're like, oh, we're looking for blue sushi. Blue sushi. A blue sushi. This building, I cannot believe this is Fort Worth. When I look at this, I'm completely floored. I want to show you something. Look at this. You got this right here, and then you got this billboard right here. It's very noir. I'm kind of letting you know that Fort Worth is, is a very cool film town. I mean, we're, we're blowing away Austin by long shot. Richard Linkletter is just salivating. I want to show you this building right here. First, we'll go to the moon right here, and then we'll just sweep over to this shot right here. So there's the moon right here. There's the moon right there. There's the moon, and then we'll just sweep over. I'm gonna go out to like a 13 millimeter. <laughs> got it. And then we've got this thing right here. Look at that. Look at that, huh? Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Look at that. A little more light right there. Is that something right there? Huh? Kind of much of like a Marlon Brando movie or something like Don Juan kind of thing. Right here. I know. If they wanted to try to do that. I gotta find blue sushi. I have no idea where it is. Oh wait a minute. That looks like a blue something blue over that way. Okay, let's see where we're at now. Completely packed. Completely packed. Uh you're gonna learn the Spanish language, you just hang out there for a while. There is that's Hollywood feed store. Right there. So we're gonna see. No, that says handstone. Okay. I know she said Hollywood feed store. It might be the right one. That's the one right there. We'll get a better shot of it right here. That's the blue sushi. Saki grill. Right here. And we're gonna get a, a shot of the inside of it. It's a marvelous place right here. There's even a, uh, you can see right there, there's a. Look at that. Is that not something? sushi look at this stuff right here big film spot maybe we got enough extras in here or something who knows how much you rent it out that's great look at that right across the street from the museum amazing and they got these heaters too they got one going right here 